This video took forever to make, and if you want to support the channel more, honestly, just show up to streams, be there, be active. Uh, yeah, watching the content and being a part of the community is probably the best way to support. Uh, love you guys, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, and welcome to the monthly music recap, or the ranked review recap for uh, February 2024. I am Bradley and I have a broad taste of music and this is everything I've listened to this month. This video will be split into three segments. The first is going to be a showcase of a bunch of good songs that I heard this month, uh, stuff that has amazed me, most of which has been sent in on my stream, and some of which are actually uh, artist submitted songs as well. Uh, good enough to actually be put between some really amazing classic stuff. The second segment is going to be best to worst all the albums that have come out this year that I've heard this month. And last is going to be best to worst albums that I heard this month that didn't come out this year. Alright, so the first segment is going to be a few uh, song shoutouts that I heard on stream that I adored. I'll just be showing these off one after another and just know that I love all of these and would recommend all of them. There's a good chance that you've heard a couple of these and many of these I have heard before in the past, but I still thought they were absolutely stunning and worth sharing. I do apologize uh, beforehand as there's going to be a lot of whiplash as the tone between these songs is very different and it is in chronological order of discovery. Of America I said I am that I am I am I am I am So hold my dream Don't cry for When you hear the call you got to get it under white word up Laughing and smiling Alright, now for all the albums that I listened to from this year, this month. God, that, that name doesn't really do justice for this album. Uh, it does sound pretty tacky. Uh, it's a metalcore EP that isn't just pumping out boring cliches. Uh, it actually sounds futuristic and is more fulfilling than most albums twice its length. It's a fantastic little project that took away my breath this month. My favorite poem was the one I read to you For the teleprompter on the tongue of my shoe Wodeka's loose styled mixtape is amazing. It is just as grand and instantaneous as I didn't mean to haunt you, uh, but an entirely new package and purpose. Simply do not miss out. She reaches out, she reaches out to she. I never actually read the title until now, funny enough. Uh, anyways, Anthony Fantano was the one who originally sold me on Chelsea Wolf, so it's no surprise. Uh, that he made me see a lot more in this album that, uh, than I did initially. Uh, but there's absolutely no shame in that. It's way more conceptually focused than any of her other projects, which makes it feel a lot different and makes it feel like a really big standout in the catalog. What the fuck with the we never let you make money, baby. Ain't making money I love, I love, I love, I love when you rage with me. 
There is somehow not a single bad song on this album. Uh, that is quite a remarkable feat for Yeet. It feels concrete, and it feels complete. Super futuristic, and it is way more ambitious than it ever needed to be by a mile. It is genuinely amazing. Thought I was an alien, found out I was a twit. My body is a prison. So with this album, I hit play, uh, expecting it to be mid, as I was immediately greeted by easy, uh, easily recognizable synth pop, something that I hear a lot of people doing nowadays. Uh, however, once the first song ended, I just felt like I heard something wildly ambitious. Uh, and then the next song, the same thing. These songs are uh, very immersive, surprisingly. Uh, some of the most immersive synth pop music I've heard in a minute. It was surprisingly great and very consistent, and I even enjoyed some of the more obscure cuts like hardware software off this project as well. I've been revisiting this one quite a lot. Yeah, the title of this one is really something else, uh, but it's a DJ mix, and it starts off pretty subtle. You know, it starts pretty all right. Um, but what really sold me on this is that it eventually locks into something truly amazing. Uh, I feel like this project uh, eventually becomes this really amazing, uh, suspenseful experience. It's, it's very loose and fun. It's a pretty reasonable grindcore experience uh, with very competent mixing. It, it does a lot right, though also at the same time probably isn't the most memorable thing in the world. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't see myself remembering it a whole bunch, but you know, the thing is, is with revisiting it, I mean, it sounds amazing. Like it's it's pretty high, high cut when it comes to this stuff. But yeah, it's the hyper shit that you would expect from this genre if you like this sort of cutthroat music. Uh, it's definitely worth a shot. But I remember every you said I wake up in the morning The mixed reviews on this one really intrigued me, uh, and it literally took me until the very end of this album to start enjoying it. Uh, it sounds really cheap, um, but also at the same time pulls off a punk aesthetic uh, throughout it. It's like at first I'm like, oh god, why does it sound like this? And then by the end I'm like, oh, you know what? It does kind of feel like a lot of the, uh, the decisions it's making with stripping everything back kind of serves the purpose of not caring about the world. And, you know, there's sort of a drained energy to it, you know? It did kind of remind me of the appeal of stuff like Blade. Uh, so if you're into that kind of stuff, this might, this might be worth a shot. But then again, I, I remind you, it's a lot of people aren't fucking with it. But but I got I got I got a decent experience out of it. <laughs> It's a pretty decent sample heavy EP. Uh, it definitely could flow together better, but I returned to it recently and actually, yeah, I, I enjoy this thing quite a bit. Uh, I've heard another project from Finney and I think this one's a bit better and if I was to rescore it, I might even honestly bump it up to like a seven, uh, but either way, uh, yeah, it's a good vibe. I can change, I can change, I can change, I can change for the bed So this is a folk album that sounds really nice, uh, but it follows a three-act structure with narration that doesn't really make the album work much better, and I just generally didn't really care for it uh, outside of the sound. This is one of my more unpopular takes of the month. Uh, I really don't enjoy this Frico album. Uh, it has some pretty prestigious names working behind the scenes, but the music suffers from trying too hard to be big and not having a strong foundation. Uh, imagine Black Country New Road meets indie rock cliches. I also don't really enjoy the vocals, uh, but I do appreciate the ambitious attempt, even though I don't really like this project all that much. Zara Larson returns with an album full of love songs from different perspectives. It's decently well produced and decently fun, though it lacks the punch of some of the best moments from her debut. Don't be scared of us, can't be defined. Pounds never show up on CP time. I wanna try to feed the law. You wanna be with me, of course. Shake a look at peace, wanna see some more. Sims creates a futuristic sounding project with electronic music that does not really complement her stilted flow. 
Um, I feel like the combination here just didn't work for me. I, I appreciate the experiment, and again, it was kind of assembled in only three days, but I, I feel like it kind of showed some of her biggest flaws as, uh, as an artist throughout this. Everything said, huh? I have absolutely no interest in uh, talking about this album any further. I don't like it, I don't think the music sounds good, and Kanye is annoying as hell throughout it, so yeah. Alright, and now for the gigantic list of older albums that I heard this month. I heard so many projects, I was sent in so many albums on my stream, most of these I was uh, sent on my stream. And so most of these footage does exist for it, so if you're really curious about it, then uh, let me know in the comments. Alright, here we go. I feel like what really got me, uh, turned me around to Bob Dylan was his amazing sense of humor in a lot of his songs, but on Highway 61 Revisited, uh, very little of that is actually present. It's it's a shockingly serious and meditative album. Many people criticize Bob Dylan's voice and say he's like an awful singer, uh, but his words, I mean, damn, he, he really is like an amazing poet. I, I can't help but get lost in the emotion of what he's saying, and as a result, I end up actually loving the singing, and I find it very comforting. The instrumental atmosphere also feels like he's playing these songs one-on-one, -on -one, like in a very small room with you there. Uh, every track on this thing serves a special purpose, and this project just feels like an, uh, a very intimate self-portrait of Bob Dylan as a person through his music. Yeah, I, I thought this was an absolutely amazing listen, something that was really touching and uh, kind of life-changing, too. So this album, I was sent on stream and I was just told it's the spookiest drum and bass album I'll possibly ever hear, possibly ever made. Uh, what they didn't tell me though is how uh, this instrumental album is one of the most beautiful pieces of modern instrumental storytelling I have ever heard. Uh, it was released in 97, but you know what, it's modern enough for me, for, uh, for me to say that. Uh, it does have some cool drum and bass music, and, you know, it's very sharp and interesting and aesthetically unique for sure, but the ambient songs is really, uh, the, those are what really stitch it together for me. It, it creates a much deeper experience. I, I'd say that the most important song on this whole thing is the 15-minute ambient intro, which kind of feels like being trapped at the bottom of the ocean and being able to, un like, not being able to escape. But it also kind of feels like the end of a story, like, you know, like you're kind of seeing the picture from after everything is kind of said and done, uh, which reminded me a lot of something like Godspeed's F.A. Infinity in that way, because it feels like with every song afterwards, it's kind of like, you know, what were the events before, you know, that first ambient song? And honestly, yeah, the, the sonic storytelling is amazing. It ends up going back to this ambience as almost like a callback and a re-experiencing of that moment. Uh, with a finale that I feel like is really crazy and also uh, th threw me for a curve. Like, yeah, this this one was a real, like, mental journey, and I absolutely loved it, um, and I've been listening to it quite a lot since I heard it on stream. <laughs> the Ascension! Imagine a no-way version of Godspeed. That's right, we're bringing back Godspeed, uh, but basically 20 years before Godspeed. Uh, yeah, that's this. These songs have an unbelievable amount of tension. The instrumental walls make you feel like you're encased and trapped inside. Uh, it's a truly thrilling sonic palette and a wonderful exploration of texture, uh, as it seems to want to see how far it can push it to reach sonic ascension. Never did like it all that much, and one day the axe just fell. So I drifted down the lily called another bed and drew up the jag of high. Blood on the Tracks is the other Bob Dylan album I heard this month, and I was surprised how different it felt uh, compared to Highway 61. Uh, I, I guess it makes sense it was since, you know, it was released like 10 years later. Uh, while that project definitely had a connection through Dylan, through the sound and storytelling in a way, this album kind of feels like a direct heart-to-heart -heart with the listener, and kind of like that, that intimate feeling times 10. It's much more stripped back, and the songs follow a pretty similar straightforward pattern. Uh, a phrase is kind of repeated on time to keep songs chugging along. Uh, for me, it kind of felt like an invitation to the listener to return to the story and sing along every iteration. Um, and by the end of the album, it felt like a warm hug, a soft and sweet experience that was a true joy to be a part of. Yeah. 
it's not just heavy, but it also manages to have a lot of punch in it. It, it manages to kind of cycle you through, you know, uh, tension and release. I also love albums that bleed authenticity because the more you believe in the experience and the more you feel like you can understand it, the more you start to connect with it. Uh, and I feel like, you know, specific songs like Burnt Year and A Remedy and A Fever kind of do that, just that with like, you know, kind of laying back on the intensity and sucking you into the experience. Uh, the pacing of this album is amazing, the texture is wonderful, and it really just felt like a, ne a next level listen. Yes, I listened to Animals this month. It was a very busy month indeed. Uh, Animals feels like a musical storybook, uh, which makes sense because it's actually based on a book. Uh, that being said, the intro and outro kind of serve as narrative beginning and end pieces to the three main chapters in the middle. These songs, Dog, Pigs, and Sheep, are all amazing in their own way. It's extremely ahead of its time for being released in the 70s as well. Uh, anyways, there isn't a dull moment in these very lengthy songs, and they managed to impress me. And I've actually returned to this album even more as well. It's amazing. This feels like drug-fueled punk with no purpose but to excite the listener. It is raw, it is primal, catchy, mixed like crap, but enjoyable through every stage of it. This to me felt like Mingus's ADHD album. It starts off very focused in the first two songs, uh, and then the brush just sort of strokes away and it starts doing some weird other shit for the rest of the album. Uh, it's a unique jazz journey uh, that feels like it's hard to predict the next step, and I'd say it's a great inclusion in the Mingus catalog. Yeah, this album, I, I heard it a while ago, it, but it grew on me this month as it was sent back in. It went from an 8 to a 9. I didn't really know much about Melvin's before uh, someone has been like sending just a bunch of stuff in, and they basically don't give a fuck about anything or anyone. And this album is that, but over Sludge and Doom, which sounds amazing and chaotic. Uh, what's also really cool about this album is it gives me a better understanding of Nirvana, because Melvin's was one of uh, Kurt Cobain's biggest influences, and you could actually hear a lot of what he would pull from their music, uh, even on just this album alone. With bad luck Somehow I skipped over this one, uh, which is very embarrassing considering how great it was. Oh, low battery. Whoops. Uh, anyways, uh, I knew I adored the first song on this album. It was sent in a while ago, so I was pretty happy when I saw that somebody sent in the full project. Um, needless to say, it actually managed to work even better than I expected to as a full listen. Uh, I give most of the credit basically to, well, strong songs, but also there's a center point where the singer actually uh, almost just switches out. And it kind of, yeah, the, the album also changes styles pretty drastically throughout it. Uh, and it kind of results in the whole thing feeling like this, uh, like like almost like going through stages of grief or like a unity in sadness. And yeah, it's it's an absolutely amazing country, rock, folk album, singer-songwriter. It, it combines so many amazing things. But again, it's, it's that feeling uh, that it gives throughout the full project that I think really makes it stand out. <laughs> No means no, wrong. This album also grew on me. Uh, this thing is fucking great. It might even grow again, like, actually. It might end up bumping up to, like, a nine. Um, yeah, this basically, they, they've perfected dopamine transmission uh, throughout this album. It, it's fun, it's energetic, but also at the same time, the lyrics, they're wild. I mean, the sound, it's really good. It's, like, it points hypnotic, but at the same time, it's just, like, these grooves. They really lock you in. Um, I do, I do think there's some moments where it goes a bit too far, but like at the same time, like uh, with, re with returning to it, uh, I managed to actually love these, you know, just love the absurdity of it. Uh, because again, like this is an album that came out in the eighties, dude, this thing came out in the eighties and like, if this came out yesterday, it would be just as good and just as praised. Like it's fucking amazing.
This album is under the genre of emo violence. Yes, emo violence is a real genre. Uh, and it's actually a very accurate description of this genre, as it sounds like an emo version of hyperviolence, uh, which is, yes, a genre that also exists. Um, it's not just a pointless expression either. The sounds of these songs can definitely bleed together at points, but the album's structure and small attention, uh, attention to detail kind of sets it apart for me personally. It sounds great, and I'd recommend it to people who are looking for something a little bit heavy in their lives. Uh, people who are very sad and angry and like getting the angst out with a bit of distorted bullshit. I love how the only genre for this thing is tango, as it feels like so much more. Uh, it is a beautiful blend of orchestral elements to create a distinctive story for each individual listener, and it is simply gorgeous. You could even hear just from the from the previews how damn gorgeous this thing is. I mean, come on, this, the sound of this thing is insane. <laughs> This is an 89 minute album with almost 50 songs, and you would think it would get really exhausting, but surprisingly, no, actually. Uh, because it feels like it tells a story amongst these four parts of the album, uh, which all just differ just enough uh, for you to be able to see the sense of humor slowly kind of die down uh, by the end of it. Yeah, it goes from kind of goofing around to very serious, and it really feels like the transformation is as vivid as day. Uh, and yeah, I'd say it's absolutely worth sitting through because, you know, these individual songs too, like they're, they're extremely well made and they feel very complete. Battle Fight Shed is as straightforward as an emo album can get. The vocals are great, the mixing is amazing, and the writing is extremely compelling. Uh, it plays it very by the book, but it also manages to execute, uh, execute in the most beautiful way possible. This is a brief EP by the alias of Kobiaro, uh, who usually makes very groovy, danceable, noisy electronic music. Uh, and, in, and on this project in specific, the color has been sucked away entirely for something more industrial and immediate. Uh, it works extremely well. I just wish that there was more, because I just love the material here and would love to see something even more expansive uh, throughout this sound palette. At first, with the Silent Hill 2 soundtrack, I didn't get a lot out of it. I was kind of going in with very heavy expectations, and I was taking it too seriously. Uh, but what actually made this project click for me, and it's kind of insane, is I was just freestyling a bunch of random bullshit over it. And upon doing so, weirdly, I kind of understood the music and appreciated the sounds and textures a lot more. Um, and it also clicked with me the personal journey aspect that the game apparently has as well. It's definitely what... A garbage truck, whatever, just, it's, it's one of the weirdest instances of an album clicking for me ever, and it might even grow again on me in the future. This is a single 20 minute song, and it feels like one hell of a performance. It's incredibly engaging from start to finish as well. Loved it. Great skate punk. So the young girl will come out this hour. This is another Beefheart album that works really well as a full experience, as it feels like a giant fucked up puzzle. It's weird, uh, occasionally very offensive, but never boring. In order to succeed at this sort of style for a band like Placebo, especially with a genre like this that has been oversaturated over the years, you have to sell it. You have to stand out. So, does the song succeed at that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, but it also feels like they kind of set the blueprint for a lot of other artists that uh, would eventually come afterwards. The playing is heavenly, the mix is amazing, uh, and the songs are extremely consistent throughout with a good amount of variety. There are certainly a few moments here that don't really come together at the end, uh, but it does attempt still to be ambitious and something more, which I respect and I will always appreciate. <laughs> With this album, I was told I'd get something beautiful, 
and I did. It's as simple as that. Uh, it can result sometimes in things just being a vibe and not really feeling like much else, but regardless, sounds great. I can't be too mad. This is a chaotic, sludgy, hardcore album that pushes things to the absolute extreme. It is brutal and grimy music that is unconcerned with your well-being, and it also results in some really insane experiments. I, I can't really fully recommend this edgy-ass band, uh, but in my experience, I at least found it interesting. So this is a two-part LP uh, with short but violent bar fight punk hardcore music. <laughs> uh, the music gets the blood boiling, but I can't really imagine listening to this outside of a live setting as the energy uh, there would probably be unignorably high. And uh, yeah, as it is though, uh, when it leads into the absurdity, it's very fun. I also like the writing a lot on this project. <laughs> This is an album I remember listening to when it came out, uh, but I didn't remember anything about it besides the fact that I liked it. Uh, someone sent it in on stream recently, and uh, yeah, it's pretty damn cool. Uh, I think it has a few moments where the fun stops for some obligatory metalcore clean vocals, uh, but those moments do feel very short, and the great moments are very triumphant. So this is a very dirty and oppressive listen with amazing production. It has some moments that kind of overshadow some others. Um, but, uh, yeah, it often feels like watching someone descend into pure insanity, which is morbidly fun. It ends in, a set, uh, in an unsatisfying way, in my opinion, but it's still worth a listen. I will add, um, upon revisiting it, it might have grown a little bit. So it's one of those that I definitely want to return to and see if anything changed. <laughs> So this is a refreshing turn for Deftones. It maintains the similar aesthetic they've kind of been trapped in for years, uh, but with a more diverse set of toys to play with, I guess. I think the song that really immediately got me into it was Rapture. I wasn't a huge fan of Hole in the Earth, honestly, but Rapture was kind of just wild and out there, and you know, it, it kind of got me started with the album experience. The album kind of feels like it falls into some same issues further on uh, as more recent Deftones projects in general. Uh, they have some great songs, but don't really have an amazing flow throughout the album. It, it feels like it's kind of due to the very stagnant and stationary aesthetic that they've, again, just been very stuck in. Definitely feels like this by the halfway point. Um, felt like I was being served variations of the same style and sound, and as a result, I lost excitement very quickly in this album. Basically, it taught me exactly what I needed to expect throughout it. However, uh, and then Pink's cell phone shows up. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, huh. Well, that, uh, I guess I didn't expect something that terrible. Um, yeah. Yes, I listened to this classic 80s synth-pop album this month thanks to someone graciously sending it in, and I enjoyed the big hits quite a lot, uh, as expected, but unfortunately, I feel like they overshadow the rest of this album. Uh, as it feels like the rest of the album is trying to do something really big and just at the same time doesn't really pull it off in the same way shout and uh, everyone wants to rule the world but yeah i mean the other songs they're enjoyable don't get me wrong but tears for fears in my opinion are not like the best songwriters uh they're great at assembling larger than life tracks and occasionally could pull off something as a full package but i feel like i really struggle to care for some of the more tame songs and also the very large and ambitious uh finale of this project which kind of, to me, felt like them overdoing it uh, without, again, the strong foundations of songwriting. So I also forgot to add this album. It is an experimental hip-hop mixtape with some really great ideas. Uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of Chief Keef, but again, with, the, uh, with a lot of noise in there that I feel like is kind of an interesting touch. Uh, it's something where I feel like there's a lot of potential here, um, maybe not fully realized, but still some really good ideas, and I overall enjoyed the project quite a bit. Like 
This album starts off so amazing. It's an amazing, cavernous, ambient techno project with EDM elements that all complement the vibe. And I probably enjoyed this thing, in, like the songs individually, more than the full album experience, uh, because I feel like what happens is it fumbles the bag in the final leg of this album. It becomes way too overblown, and it loses me. It, it starts as an experience, and it just ends as something I feel like I'm watching from the sidelines. Uh, really bad sequencing and assembling uh, from an album with, again, some really solid songs. <laughs> I did not love this Machine Girl mix as much as I expected to. It's pretty fun, but also it kind of lacks distinction, uh, which feels like it tries to make up with lackluster sampling in between songs. It was a fine listen, but it's nothing I really want to revisit. Remember how I said uh, Captain Beefheart were weird? Uh, well, compared to those, uh, this album is completely off the deep end of insanity. I think it's even tagged musical parody on Rate Your Music because it really does feel impossible to tell whether or not uh, it knows what it's doing. I wrote this specifically about the album. Um, the album feels like a strange late night cartoon you run across when you wake up at 4 a.m. and cannot fall asleep. It's not that great, but it keeps you entertained uh, enough to stay up for better or for worse. There's slices of creepiness that never really feel like they add up to something more. Uh, might be actually worth uh, a listen though. Maybe it's worth checking out. I, I thought it was mildly interesting. This feels like a Mr. Bungle album with a different coat of paint and purpose. Uh, I don't love how it sounds, and yeah, it felt very hard to break away from that comparison. I still did enjoy overall what it was trying to do, but I kind of just respect the project more than I enjoy the individual tracks. <laughs> I think this album gets a lot of stuff wrong, uh, like the fact the music should be in, uh, enjoyable to listen to. Um, this is not that. It's not a total disaster, um, but honestly, the things that are good about it aren't really worth enough to mention just due to the fact that I really cannot recommend this thing due to how shrill um, the project can be to where it literally feels like it is designed to give you tinnitus. I was sent in two Crywank albums this month. This is the second one, the one I enjoyed more, um, but funny enough, I have less to say about it. I thought it sounded a bit more complicated than the other one, but I feel like I'll get more into that later. It's it's fine, I, I thought it was okay. Despite this project uh, receiving nearly universal praise, I really could not get into this thing, at least in the very beginning, as it feels like it has this very fake and annoying sense of swagger. Eventually, though, it does calm down, as, as you heard from that clip. All right, that saxophone. All right, these final handful of songs, all right, they're pretty great. All right, I'm not a fan of how it starts, uh, but it definitely pulls it off in the end to improve the experience tenfold. <laughs> I was sent in this project by Hexobyte, who is someone who I literally modded because they know so much about electronic music that I want to see their opinion every time something electronic shows up. Uh, that being said, they sent in this album, said it was a 10. I didn't enjoy it that much, honestly. Uh, I definitely expected to like it more. It starts off very promising, but I feel like it just kind of continues to lose focus and it becomes increasingly tacky. And uh, yeah, I, I wanted to love this, but ended up feeling like it had just too many issues. I'd say it had more issues than it did cool ideas by the end of it. It's a disappointment. Um, it has otherworldly levels of production, but just not enough meat on the bone in terms of ideas. Only exception for you. Uh-oh, boo, I hear the boos, boo! Listen, okay, this is an album with some really electrifying moments. Paramore, they capture the sound of the late 2000s rock scene, right? And they give it the power and the punch that it needed. There is a good handful of songs here that are just not nearly as engaging as I expected them to be. I feel like there is a four-track run from feeling sorry to misguided uh, ghosts that feels like a total snooze fest. 
Uh, the start of the album is also super petty and angsty in a way that just feels like it's kind of hard to listen to with how mature the new Paramore stuff is. There was only really a few moments where it genuinely hit me, like, emotionally. But, yeah, I, I don't think it's a bad album, but it's definitely one where you kind of maybe just had to be there to get it fully. Uh, or you still have to have that angst inside you that lights up like a flame while listening. Uh, and I have neither, so it's not for me. <laughs> I was sent in two uh, Helions albums on stream, um, and this is the second of them, which I thought was a little bit better. Uh, the debut kind of seems like it's more content with making punchy, emotional, and personal songs with compelling stories to match a raw sound. Sure, the writing does kind of suck at points, uh, and it definitely does not always work as planned, but it certainly was more enjoyable compared to the other album that is on this list. It has a stronger sense of purpose, and it presents itself here. Uh, it's pretty heartfelt, even if it's very cringe. And I mean it, very, very cringe. Will I slap your face too lightly when you ask me to control your breathing? Crywank, tomorrow is nearly yesterday and every day is stupid. This is the big Crywank album. Um, my review on this was really, I, I'm proud of it. I said it's a great guitar album if you ignore the guy pissing his pants and crying in the center of this project. And uh, yeah, that's basically what it is. Uh, it's an artist named Crywank, and I feel like the artist's name is extremely uh, accurate. However, I did compare this album to basically being uh, like watching an art exhibit of just that, someone pissing their pants and crying while playing guitar, but also at the same time, it's like you watch it and you're kind of amazed by it. Um, there is something about this project with just how pathetic it is that is impressive and also not just an immediate write-off for me, which is why I didn't hate it, even though a lot of it is pretty cringe and uncomfortable because that, you know, provocative and awkward feeling actually does feel like a purpose to the experience. Uh, it's just a shame that I can't listen to any of these songs, uh, you know, because of I just don't want to ever fucking return to this. The Electric Prunes, Release of an Oath. This is a religious symphonic rock album, and it basically gives exactly what it promises. It feels like a spiritual cleansing in music form, and is, uh, and it also feels like it's presented almost as a gift to God in music form. Um, like, like the there's passages of we, you know, God, you're the only one. You're, you're, you know, we, and it feels like the the rock is supposed to like, you know, elevate things. I feel like it's effective if that's the kind of experience you're looking for, but unfortunately, it's not. And I don't get anything out of this. It's not what I'm looking for, it's not what I need, it's not what I click with. This was the second Emo Violence album that I was sent in this month, and I enjoyed it significantly less than the previous one, um, basically due to technicality, uh, which sucks, because it really does feel like the chinger... Chinger? It really does feel like the singer was trying to impersonate, uh, impersonate a chicken. That's... yeah. Wow. Chinger. That sounds like a slur. Anyways, it sounds like they were trying to impersonate a chicken that was lit on fire, uh, and that is basically completely unignorable. <laughs> It's a rare instance where this sound association completely ruins a project, and I unfortunately have absolutely no way around that. I set my friends on fire, Astral Rejection, OG, updated 2019 version. It is important to mention that because I've heard that the album is an update to the 2011 version, which is apparently horrific. Uh, and for some reason, yes, for some reason I was sent this in on stream, even though I thought the other album was horrible. Someone sent this in and was like, you're gonna like this better. And guess what? I actually did. It was actually listenable. Uh, in fact, I'd say I enjoyed it about a thousand times better than the other album. Uh, but understand that again, it's, it's a remake of a version that is apparently just as bad as the other one. Uh, but there are some decent melodies. There are some moments here where it's kind of catchy. And yeah, I, I'd say that I wasn't nearly as offended by this. So this is the Helions album I was sent in, which is a 2016 rock metal album uh, that means very well. It has great messaging, okay? 
um, but has absolutely no idea how to sell it in any way and kind of just feels like a very awkward soapbox uh, behind cheesy uh, ripoffs of acts from 10 years prior. I have no connection to this. I, I think it fails on most fronts. I think it sounds ridiculous and borderline like a school assembly. Um, and also it's theater metal, all right? It was, it was going to fail from the beginning. It's called Opera Oblivion. It, there was no shot I was going to like this, okay? But it actually ended up being worse than I expected. That being said, you know, I appreciate it. It's, it's kind of charming in its effort, but it's not good. <laughs> Popular J-pop artist Otto asked her fans uh, what songs they would want to see uh, covered for a full album, and she took the most popular asks and ran with them. Uh, and yeah, there is absolutely no passion or personal connection to these songs, and instead, you have an album of Otto singing the greatest hits of Japan. The issue is, of course, uh, Otto is a horrible vocalist. Uh, absolutely terrible. She is often straining her voice to a ridiculous degree for the purpose of basically showing off. And again, they feel like someone desperately trying to keep your attention however possible, uh, even if it means sounding like a dying dolphin in the process. Uh, torture, would not recommend. Yeah, a few of these I will likely revisit to see if I get anything more out of them, but also a lot of these I was shocked just how much I wanted to return to them. Uh, I say wanted to because I've been doing like 12 to 16 hour long streams of doing nothing but listening to user submitted music last month, which is why there are so many albums. Anyways, best way to support the channel is of course, sending in music on streams, but not just that, okay? Because it is expensive. If you just show up to streams, chat, say hi, type emotes, talk to people, talk to me, or even just be there and lurk, that is in my opinion, the best way to support the channel. That is the best way to get me uh, through what I do. And uh, yeah, and I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much made it to the end of the video. Thank you for sitting through this whole thing. I know it was long, but hopefully there will be some stuff for you throughout this. Playlist should be linked down below of all the music. Here, peace.